I'm Dr. Charlie Bonson, wildlife veterinarian for North Dakota Game and Fish. Chronic wasting disease is a, a fatal brain disease of deer, moose, and elk. Um, it was first detected in North Dakota in 2009 down in Grant and Sioux County. Um, remained there in very low infection rates for about 10 years. Uh, 2018, we found our first case of chronic wasting disease up in the northwest part of the state, Divide County. Um, we've since found it in a, in a few more areas, um, really throughout a large portion of western North Dakota. It is a, you know, a fatal brain disease of, of individual animals, but our biggest concern is that at a population level, high infection rates can really um, cause some pretty serious impacts to the long-term health of our, of our deer populations. Chronic wasting disease is always fatal. Um, you know, between getting infected and actually dying is something around an average of 18 months. You know, when we, studies that collar these animals and follow them around find that uh, mortality from all these other causes, um, roadkill, hunter harvest, um, winter, um, are much higher in our infected animals. Um, but, you know, should they survive those things, uh, they will develop this really rapid, um, you know, fatal disease at the end of that period of time. Last year, uh, we finalized, um, you know, a new CWD management and surveillance plan. We had been following one that was about 20 years old at that point. Um, and so revisited a lot of these issues of how best to manage this disease, how best to look for it. You know, following the legislative session, we revisited that new plan and just added a few additional tweaks on it. Um, and so, uh, you know, some of the, the highlights of that are um, that we're making some changes to to regulations around in-state movement of, of carcasses. Now, starting this year, you'll be able to, any animal harvested within North Dakota can be moved um, anywhere within the state. If it comes out of the unit where it was harvested, there is now a disposal requirement. Um, and so the material left after processing or left after taxidermy has to end up in a landfill. Um, so either you can take it directly to a landfill or uh, you use any kind of waste management provider. Um, as long as that stuff gets buried, it's, uh, it, it is locked into a place where other animals can't have access to that infectious material. Um, and so this should be a more viable long-term approach. Um, you know, it applies to everyone statewide, but, but ultimately, uh, um, you know, is a more convenient way to still address the, the risk. Same restrictions apply as before for any animal harvested outside of North Dakota. So if you, uh, you know, travel out of state, um, if you're gonna bring that animal back, you do have to go through those same practices of making sure the high-risk carcass parts don't come into North Dakota. Uh, or another big management um, piece centers around baiting. Uh, one tweak is that, you know, after reviewing the situation, um, you know, we came to appreciate the fact that we can apply this tool in maybe a more precise way. And so that folds into to surveillance. So moving forward, um, any unit that has a baiting restriction uh, that restriction could possibly be taken off if we meet a sampling goal. So that, that sampling goal is uh, we want to test um, a number of adult deer that's equivalent to 10% of the gun license allocation for that unit. So if a unit has a thousand licenses allocated in a given year, we need to test a hundred adult deer within that year. Um, if we reach that sampling goal and all of those animals come back negative, um, a unit uh, can come off the baiting restriction list and so baiting can resume in that unit. And so that, that sampling goal, uh, 100 animals can consist of both gun uh, harvested animals but archer, also archery or muzzle loader. Um, in addition, our department does a lot of testing of, of deer around the state for other disease or health concerns. Uh, we also sample uh, roadkill, so a combination of those different sources of samples um, can all contribute to, to reaching that sampling goal. Another part of address, or revisiting the surveillance and management plan was uh, figuring out how we can do get better surveillance data moving forward, making more informed decisions. Uh, what we came to find is that we had reached a point where we were uh, doing surveillance, kind of a combination of some areas every year, some year areas rotationally, but ultimately lending itself to testing half the state or, or more. And that just ended up resulting in, in pretty poor surveillance totals. And so moving forward, we hope to be a little more disciplined and sample just one fourth of the state 
every year. Um, this coming year we'll be sampling the, the southeast part of the state. Um, we'll then move to the northeast, but then just, uh, you know, in a rotational fashion, um, really focusing surveillance on, on a very specific one uh, fourth portion of the state. Um, outside of that area, if uh, hunters are interested in having their animals tested, they can still do that. Um, a couple of options, uh, one would be to uh, take their animal to any district office uh, you know, around the state. Um, we also have collection sites that they can drop their heads off at. Most of those will be in our surveillance area, but we do have a few scattered in other big cities within the state. Um, finally, another uh, option would be to use a self-sampling kit. So uh, you can go online and request a kit or pick up a kit at a district office, collect that sample yourself, mail it to us, and we'll get a test result for you. So when we're trying to manage chronic waste and disease, we know that that's a really challenging thing. And, and ultimately the goal is to try to slow how fast this disease spreads uh, throughout a population and throughout our state. Um, you know, that becomes a matter of trying to look at uh, how the disease is spread and then what sort of things are we doing or not doing that might contribute to that. Um, we know that the disease is transmitted between animals uh, through direct contact, but also when an animal comes into contact with the bodily fluids of, of an infected individual. We know that uh, baiting is one practice that we as hunters do that, that uh, increases all of those sorts of things um, and therefore spreads this disease more fast than it would naturally happen. Um, and so we're gonna continue to restrict baiting you know, where we have a very clearly established disease risk. Um, and so uh, that fold, and so we plan to fold in uh, better surveillance to try to make that decision in a more informed manner. Drop off locations uh, through the archery season, we have a collection of freezers scattered throughout the southeast in major cities. Um, during the gun season, we have collection barrels in most, um, most towns throughout the southeast uh, part of the of the state. Um, so you drop off your head there, uh, we'll get it sampled, um, and you can expect test results within four weeks. We hope to do it sooner, but, um, but ultimately that's the timeline you're looking at. Um, in order to find your results, you'll just go to your online account, um, at your online game and fish account, and uh, results will show up in your inbox. We're only able to test adult deer. Um, fawns are not a reliable way to uh, you know, try to find out if the disease exists in a, in a population or not. The likelihood of a fawn being infected is so low um, in our state currently that it's not worth us trying to test those and it's not very informative if you're trying to find the disease. And so if you're unsure of the age of your deer, you can sure still drop off any animal and we'll age it for you. Um, same thing is with animals that might have a lot of trauma to their head. Um, we're not able to test a lot of those, but still drop off your head and we can make an assessment. There's not been a, you know, a clear link between human health concerns and, and eating an animal that's infected, but out of a sense of caution, it's recommended that you don't. That's ultimately hunter's decision, but, but the recommendation is that if you're hunting in an area where CWD is known to exist, uh, you get your animal tested and, and um, and don't eat animals that are infected. Um, so for those hunters who want to make a more informed decision, we do have testing available you know, anywhere in the state. And uh, you can go ahead and you know, use any of those options I mentioned. Yeah, ultimately we have a very clear mission at Game and Fish to promote, enhance, conserve uh, you know, game populations for, for sustained use. So use both today, tomorrow, and well into the future. That involves looking at different uh, threats to our, our population, whether that's habitat loss or, or disease threats and doing what we can to uh, reduce the impacts of that. And so, um, you know, our, our goal is to try to limit the impact of, of chronic waste and disease to make sure that this hunting tradition is enjoyed, you know, for future generations.